Yeah, you're welcome to put any of these pictures on Facebook, I guess, sometime. Mm -hmm. That'd be good. Okay, so we were talking about the benefits of the seated footwork as it relates to the full squat. And uh, in that discussion, <clears throat> we brought up that uh, the, one of the big advantages of that is that the client can now see the alignment of their legs. So they can make those corrections. That's going to hold true for your footwork with the tower bar. But these are just important considerations. So we're going to say seated footwork stays. Um, scooter is definitely a strengthener, mm -hmm. so it can stay. Standing hip stretch, again, not as much, because it's more into stretching. It can create a little bit of strength, so you know you just have to really rationalize that. But again, that bridging is our favorite for this. We love it, and uh, because it's going to build that really good strength, and they're coming from that full knee flexion. Now. Do we love the breathing as much now? I would say that it would be a very intro level, so it would depend right. on what problems the individual so if had. Right, so if there was a need to put breathing in there to teach them bridging, yeah, but for this, not really, because the knees are in extension the whole time. You are going to get some hamstring strengthening, but it's got a weaker argument. Leg springs, serious supine, great. We're working on strength. We can get them into variations with the knee flexion. 90-90, again, is going to be your more remedial. You may need to do that. It may be very important for you. Footwork with the tower bar, for the same reason that footwork seated worked on the reformer. And again, leg springs, serious sideline, to bring that balance. And also doing the side kick with that series, yes. Right. Exactly. So your side kick when you're doing leg spring series sideline, where does the emphasis shift from doing it on the mat? We talked about the muscles that are working on the mat, right? What muscles were those? The abductor. Right, the hip abductors. So what's going to be working with your leg springs sideline? The adductors. The adductors. So now you're getting balance around the joint. So we're always kind of going for balance, strength, and flexibility around the joints, right? Okay, great. And then our bridging on the ladder barrel takes a lot of articulation of the spine, but it is going to take leg strength. Um, again, that one can kind of be sitting on the fence a little bit, but we just don't really have much from ladder barrel, so if you need to throw something <laughs> in the ladder barrel, that's kind of what we've got right now. So there we go. All right, so we're going to work now down to heel raise. And I'm going to go through this a little more quickly because now you've got the format, right? So I'm not here to just give you all everything that fills in the blanks. That's not the point of this lecture. The point of this lecture is to give you the framework within which to do the problem solving for you to fill, fill out the sort of scaffolding that I've provided for you. Okay, so now do you feel like we're on a roll a little bit? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to move a little faster clip. Otherwise, we're going to be here all day. <clears throat> so for heel raise, it you know, what we were looking at was strength, and balance, and so that balance, we said, was going to require some stabilization of the trunk. So you can put in really anything that teaches <clears throat> that trunk stability with disassociation. You could rationalize that out. But we're really looking now, we're down to the ankles. And, and what have we had so far that's going to focus on the ankles? We've got variations in our double leg pump, mm -hmm. right? And that's pretty much it for the chair. On the mat, we have very, very little that we could really look at. I would venture to say nothing much other than leg pull front variation with having the ankle flex and point. Mm -hmm. okay. So the flexing and pointing because on that foot that's weight bearing is going to increase some calf strength. What about and this rationale that you may be reaching, but sidekick because you flex and point. Are you weight bearing? No. Open. So are you going to strengthen? No. Well, you might a little bit. You might strengthen a little right. bit. But is it going to be enough? Is it going to be our most effective thing to choose for heel raise? Right? So it's really, really reaching. But like pull front, we can see how that individual is going to increase their calf strength in that way. You could have them stay in that leg pull front position and just work the, the uh, 
the ankle dorsiflexion plantar flexion piece with them in the plank position. Um, <clears throat> so now as we go to reformer, we're looking, oh great, we've got footwork where we do the, uh, the heels dropping under the bar and raising in a lot of different ways. We've got our sort of bird on the wire, right, where we're getting that heel to drop down. It's, it's staying more statically down. It's more mm -hmm. of a stretch, but it's still going to help them to gain that range of motion. We've got in, you know, external rotation, parallel, internal rotation, that ability to lower and lift. Yeah. And that's going to bias, right, in the walking in place. So the internal, external rotation are going to bias different heads of the gastrocnemius. So that's where the specificity is nice. And then the parallel is going to work the whole thing. And the walking in place is really more for the ability to stabilize the pelvis while you're creating a more complicated motion throughout the kinetic chain. It's really kind of, that's, okay. that's working more okay. coordination. So for full-on strengthening, it's going to be those two feet or a single foot. If you see there's a disparity, there can sometimes be in this test a huge difference between right and left. You can do unilateral. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do bilateral. Right. Okay. Um, so are our feet and straps going to accomplish too much for us? Not unless we're, we're doing, again, that frog variation where we go into dorsiflexion as the knees flex and the hips flex, and the plantar flexion as the knees extend and the hips extend. You could perhaps rationalize that. So we'll just say, well, we don't have too much, so we'll say feet and straps. And... Again, that seated footwork, in that seated footwork, you can also incorporate the dorsi and the plantar flexion. Mm -hmm. And they've got their eyes on their ankles so they can see their alignment. <clears throat> so you can build a little bit of strength there. Um, really, the, the rest of the, um, of the reformer work, mm -hmm. you know, there's really not a whole lot there except for maybe scooter, um, again, for that calf muscle strength in that standing leg, there's a lot of stabilization around the ankle to create the dynamic movement of the leg on the carriage. So the leg that you're strengthening is your standing leg. So I'm going to put scooter there for that reason. You're not getting into a heel raise and lower, but you're having to work ankle stability there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. As you take the hands away, you've got to be working more and more ankle stability. <clears throat> and then you could even take that into the standing hip stretch with no hands, potentially. Um, but I'm going to leave it there with scooter. And then uh, for the trap table, uh, anything that comes to mind right off? Say foot, footwork with tower bar. Footwork with tower mm -hmm. bar, because that's so similar mm -hmm. to our footwork here. Mm -hmm. We can vary the springs. Okay, great. And uh, what about leg spring series? I would say that it, that would be more like feet and straps. So the only thing you would have is if you did like a frog with it. Right. You'd have to you'd have to put in some kind of a variation. This is going to be much more logical and productive for you. You're not going to get as much productivity about the leg spring series supine. But if you had a way or a reason to rationale, have a rationale, pardon me for it, um, potentially. And then ladder barrel spine corrector. Um, we're probably really pushing it with bridging at this point. So I'm, I'm just going to leave that and say, you know, we just don't have that much repertoire at this point in time. We're going to be filling in more repertoire as we go that's going to get to this, right? But for now, at this point in time, not a whole lot. Okay, goalpost on the wall. We're shifting gears. We've changed colors from the red, alignment, weight bearing of the lower extremity. Now we're having to shift our focus, our mental focus, into a, a little different area of our repertoire. So we're going to be seeing some different exercises here. So for a goalpost on the wall, organization of head, neck, and shoulders. On the chair, we just got a nice bit of repertoire the past weekend that we were together, S and R2, um, that addressed a lot of the scapular alignment. Um, not everything addressed the shoulder abduction, external rotation, 
um, but we were looking at how the shoulder girdle organizes in relationship to the thoracic spine to the rib cage. So we have we do have some work there. So anything that you can think of off the top of your head from um, for the chair. Prone scapular series. Okay, so you know we can say, definitely say that we, we need to be able to to look at at that organizational piece. And what other positions did we get into on the chair that challenged, that one of the very first things we needed to do was establish that scapular alignment that we maybe learned in our prone the scapular swan. series. The swan. The swan. No. Swan to okay. get into extension. Now here, I'm going to give you something to think about though. If we're looking at goalpost on the wall, and as I prefaced it at the beginning, Part of the lecture um, that what you're going to see is is that tendency to extend so if somebody has more of a tendency to extend mm -hmm. then perhaps we want to think about swan at a later point in time to see if they can integrate it so I'm going to put it on there but with the caveat mm -hmm. that extension could be the problem Lateral flexion. Lateral flexion Lateral and mermaid flexion. both. Okay. Lateral flexion and mermaid both required that we have an integration of the scapula uh -huh. in, again, here's a, a foreign environment, right? So this is your optimal opportunity to really get in there and change the movement patterns. So I'm going to prioritize lateral flexion and mermaid. And later on, they can show you that they can limit, control their extension in swan. But we're not really swan. So that would be more is progression. Is more mobilization of the uh -huh. spine, right? We're looking at more stabilization. So control, disassociation, stabilization. The control of the spine is going to be more stability. This is more mobility. Even though these are both mobility they have a benefit of being able to relate the scapula to the spine, again, in that foreign environment. And with the arm, and it satisfies our shoulder abduction, right? So that's, that's sort of your double benefit. You've got the shoulder abduction as you go over into your mermaid and also in your lateral flexion. Think about um, even the, the variations of that lateral flexion, where we've got the arm and leg movement, right? All that challenging. That's a ton of this spine control. Now with the shoulder held in abduction, and you could actually externally rotate that hand placement on the pedal if that's needed. It's going to be just a little bit, and it's going to help seat that shoulder blade in anyway. We, we've talked about, right, that the, the retraction of the scapula goes hand in hand with external rotation of the humerus. Okay, okay so <clears throat> great. Some more great problem solving. So uh, anything else that we've missed? A goal post on the wall. With chair? With chair. Anything that you think is going to make it? Going to make think the cut? Think Stay on the island. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're before we go at this point. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's move on to Matt, shall we? Arm works, definitely. Great, and why? Uh, because it's disassociation of the shoulders at its purest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. Disassociation of the shoulders at its purest, at its finest. Lovely. Okay, so we've got arm arcs, and that's a good place to start. Um, anything else that pops into your head? Scarecrow. Hmm? Scarecrow. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's very good. Yeah. Scarecrow is excellent. And what is so excellent about Scarecrow? It's got that beautiful mm -hmm. piece of external rotation, mm -hmm. right? It's the, you're actually so in the got, position. That's it. That's your first thing. You're in the position. And you've got your external rotation, so you've got to be able to get that goalpost. Now, is that going to be the first thing that you're going to put this person in if they're restricted? Mm -hmm. No, it's going to be your final, your goal, but yes. Again, that's where we pop the champagne. Okay, good. So, what else? That was excellent, Karen. So we've got Scarecrow. Anything else? Prone pressing. Dart. Yeah. Now, what about dart 
is not as good as Scarecrow and Prone Press Up. The extension in this mm -hmm. person may have problems with extension. Right, and, and what else does it not satisfy for us? The spine could form a balance. What position are your arms in? Behind oh, you. Yeah. Dark. Dark. Behind. Behind. Or next to you. Right. So we don't have our abduction and external rotation satisfied. Okay. You could argue that palms up is external rotation. You'd be absolutely right. However, we're looking at an external rotation with the arm in elevation. So it's not, not exactly analogous. Um, but, you know, if you, again, you'd have to really rationalize that. <laughs> okay, so good, good, we're thinking. But then why am I saying okay with prone press up? If I'm saying dart, I'm not so sure. Why am I saying okay with prone press up? Stability plus it's weight bearing. Yeah, it's the weight bearing mm -hmm. piece. And that can provide so much proprioceptive input. And that touch. Right, that's, yeah, it's the weight bearing mm -hmm. all the way through mm -hmm. the extremities. Mm -hmm. So, and then we talked about, and I'm going to go back to principles again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep doing this to you guys. Do you remember feed back and feed forward? Mm -hmm. Right, so what about the weight bearing then is going to help them with utilizing that feedback feed forward mechanism? They're going to have some, it's that um, proprioception again. Like there you go, good. It's the proprioception piece. That's it, it's proprioception, period. Mm -hmm. You get much less proprioception from an open chain. That's one of the benefits of closed chain exercise. Increased proprioceptive input into the joint. Right? So, there you go. Make sense? Because mm -hmm. they, they may not be aware of where the scapula is mm -hmm. right, as they're going into this goalpost, and that might be why they cannot access their external could rotation. you argue right. quadruped would be good for this? You could argue quadruped just because of that input, and you are going, you can take your arm. In quadruped, we teach you the mm -hmm. flexion movement, right. right? But there is really no reason why you couldn't make it much more challenging with some abduction. Okay. Because as you go away from center, you're having to create a whole lot more control in your in your um, relationship of your rib cage to your pelvis. Your obliques are working a lot harder. So you then you're satisfying the spine control, but you're also getting the proprioceptive input. So we're going to say quadruped, but you're going to have to come up with a quadruped variation, right, to really make it align beautifully. But it's not a bad place to start. It's not a bad place to start to make them aware of the scapula. All right, so. Anything else that you want to throw in there for Matt that you don't have to rationalize too hard? I think that's it. Do you think that this person would benefit at all from book openings? Keeping those short. Okay, wait a second. What position is the arm in? It's externally mm -hmm. rotated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, am I externally rotated or am I in neutral? I'm in neutral. neutral. My thumb up, I'm in neutral. Well, you don't move from neutral. Right. If you're I could be externally right. rotated palm up to the ceiling or internally rotated palm down. Okay. So, what, but where is my arm? It's come from here mm -hmm. to here. So where does it come? Neutral. To? Neutral. Abducted. To abducted. Oh. This is abduction away from the body. It is an abducted. And we're looking at shoulder abduction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, and some organization of the scapula on the trunk as we're moving the trunk. It's mobilization, but we've still got that scapular positioning on the trunk. We've got the arm in abduction, and now we've got that arm in abduction as it starts to encounter gravity more and more and more through the rotation of the ribcage. Right, so I'm going to say book openings. Alright, it's a lovely way to stretch the anterior chest and the anterior chest wall can be a big restriction. The tightness in the anterior mm -hmm. chest wall can be a big restriction of the goalpost. So what did we talk about last time we were together? And we, we got to goalpost. Everybody said, Turn tight packs, tight packs. Mm -hmm. What could this do? Open up those packs. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that made it clear to you. Yes? yes okay. Absolutely. Very good. 
So let's move along now to our reformer, shall we? And what have we encountered in our reformer repertoire to this point? Our arm series, the arm series. Right. You can walk through Tahira. No worries. Okay, so supine arm series, great. Anything else? It wasn't very well written, was that? My, my writing's getting worse and worse. Supine arm series. Okay, so anything else? You could think of maybe it's um, you might a bit of a variation. You might say the supine abdominal series. But it's just... Well, no, because I think I retract. She retracts. <laughs> okay, she retracts her suggestion. That's that's fine. You can After I actually did the movement, I retract. Yeah. All right. So anything else? But, Nothing else. Do we what about the abdominal surge? The if we're saying mermaid for yeah. the with mermaid on the reformer work here as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And what's great about the mermaid on the reformer? Yes, it's closed chain, and you get that proprioceptive input into the joint. Everybody was right on that one. <laughs> so we got our feed forward, feedback. We're on a roll, aren't we? We're going to just roll right through this. Cleopatra. All right. <laughs> Cleopatra. So Cleopatra kind of falls into that, too. Mm -hmm. And what, what else is Cleo going to do? Open up that chest as well. Do we get into abduction in Cleo? Yes. You better believe yes. it. Oh my gosh, we get into it beautifully. Yeah, great, great catch there, Suzanne. Love it. Okay, and then um, anything else? Anything else? I think that's pretty good on Reformer. Okay, so let's move along to TT, trap table, not the Audi TT. And uh, what could we have? In there, we've got some nice things there. Supine scapular series. The supine scap series. Okay. And um, a nice one into shoulder abduction to talk about your scapular orientation. Does this ring a bell to anybody? Oh, mm -hmm. yes. And that is? Seated pull down. Seated pull down. Good. Okay. Have we exhausted our TT? I bet push. there's something else. Uh -huh. What about seated push through? I front? love it. Yeah. Seated push through. And why do I love it? Because that has that uh, postural alignment and spine control. With it? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that is. Uh, and where is my arm going? Into uh, external rotation and abduction. Well, it's going all the way around. Mm -hmm. So, circumduction grabs all the planes of motion. Okay. Great. Now, onto ladder barrel spine corrector. Ladder barrel spine corrector. Ladder barrel spine correctors. We talked about a lot of the, what our repertoire so far was mobilization of the spine, but there's some, there's a couple things in there that but could help you. Could we say that the. Go ahead, Karen. Uh, I'm sorry. Karen had one. Back to forward. Yes. Bend. Back to forward bend, and why? Because you're opening up the arms into extension. Right. So again, think about that chest wall tightness. Right? So we're, is that, that's a beautiful stretch for everything in the anterior aspect of the body and the posterior aspect of the body. Right? So great. Mm -hmm. All right. So anything else that might fit that? Maybe in the spine corrector? The supine stretch. Um, where, what are your arms doing with supine stretch? Are we looking at arms? Are we looking at spine? Are we looking okay. at spine mobility? Supine stretch? No. Which one are we thinking of? The roll down and reach. Roll down and reach. Roll down and reach, okay.
supine stretch was pretty much hands behind the head, protecting yeah. the mm -hmm. head, and just into thoracic extension flexion. But this is this is where you want to be doing these things. This is where you want to blurt it out and then get that rationale, and then go okay, yeah, mm. and learn it down. And you guys are still wrapping your heads around the names of these exercises too. So you're doing very very well with the names. Okay. Um, anything else there for ladder barrel spine corrector? I think that's it. I think we're reaching with anything else. I would agree. Okay, so we're down to long sit. I'm going to have to kneel to write on this one. So for long sit, which is a lot for me to say I have to kneel to get to anything, we're looking at hamstring flexibility and spine stability. We're looking at core control axial elongation. Right, so we're going to Look at that. We're looking at some disassociation, stabilization. We're really looking at pure on hamstring flexibility and spine stability. So far, we haven't hit a whole ton of things, but we do have some things that will still satisfy. So, let's start with the chair. Anything from the chair repertoire that we're thinking of? You know, probably... Nothing much. I would think the double leg pump would be Double leg pump thing. is really the only thing that we've got that even comes close. It's hip and knee flexion and extension. Some external rotation, abduction, internal rotation, depending upon your variations. Do any of those things add to hamstring flexibility? Not really. Not really. So, um, I'm, I'm just going to say no. We don't okay. really have anything. We really don't have anything on the chair that I'm recalling to this point. Okay, so now let's go down to get all of these out of the way. Let's go down to our um, mat. Our mat is next. So double leg pump. We said no on the chair. We're on long sit mat. We got a really nice one last weekend. So if you look at your SR2 list. Under mat, think of one that you, you're going to see it. As soon as you read it, you're going to go, oh, spine, spine, stretch. spine stretch. Excellent. I knew you'd recognize that right away. Okay, so we've got spine stretch. We've got a place to start here. Anything else? It's been a challenge that hamstring flexibility. You might have to go back to your principles. You might have to look at that principles list. And, and I'm asking, I don't feel confident in this. That's okay. Um, but would doing supine arm series and uh, prone press up help with lengthening those hamstrings because you're in that, that prone position? That would help to lengthen your hip Flexors. And your hamstrings are hip extensors. Okay. So we're really not looking there at bridging. all. Okay. So is bridging going to help to lengthen the hamstring? No. Roll up, Will. Roll, Roll up. up. Okay. Great. And then going back to your principles, what did we have that's a cousin of the roll up? Assisted roll up. up. Okay. What about another cousin that would do something for your hamstrings? Another cousin. It's got a big family. It's got lots of relatives. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember, and, and again, going back to principles is always tough because you get so much information in there, but there was a standing version of the roll down there. Oh, standing so right roll down. down. In standing, <laughs> right. So in standing, can you see how that's going to help mm -hmm. to build the hamstring length? So that's pretty good. I think that's about all of the repertoire that we have that's going to fit Bill here. So standing roll down is going to come before roll up because we've got to build that hamstring length. Right? Okay. And then we go into reformer. What have we got under reformer? Thinking along the same lines. I hamstring length. say foot and straps would help with that considerably. Okay. And I would agree. Feet and straps. And what else? Um, footwork with uh, heels under the bar. Footwork. You got it. Excellent. 
So that's already got you thinking ahead to trapeze table, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. See how this stuff goes? Mm -hmm. You start to think that way. And as you're creating this yourself, you don't have to stop and do all of your reformer. You could say, oh, footwork, okay, footwork with the tower bar, great. Okay, so you can do this however you want to do this. I'm just trying to give you a framework. You're going to make this your own. All right, so we've got our, our feet and straps and our footwork. Seated footwork. I think seated footwork. Seated footwork. <laughs> it didn't come out too well. It just looks like a scribble. Okay, and um, anything else that anybody wants to suggest? Long sit. We're lengthening out those hamstrings. So we're stretching. We're stretching. Scootering. We're stretching. No. Keep going. Standing hip stretch. Standing hip stretch. Excellent. Okay. I think that's pretty good. How about trapeze table? See the push the Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Beautiful. Seated push through. You've got to get that length to be able to push that through. All right. Um, as we go back and look at the mat, is there anything else that you might be thinking of? What about would the row the roll down series? Right, roll down series. And that would so be on go the reformer look. as well. We have the roll down series. On the reformer as well, absolutely. So that's where it's kind of nice to go, uh, to not just be thinking in just these little cells of mat reformer trap table and know that you can go back and go, oh yeah, roll up series or roll down. Pardon me, that's roll down and series. And that goes on the ladder barrel to roll down and reach. Yes, okay. absolutely. Okay, so we've got roll down series here on trap table, roll down series here on reformer, and roll down and reach is what Suzanne said. Yes. Mm -hmm. If she's right, Suzanne said it. Yeah. <laughs> she's wrong, Suzanne's not saying it. If it's the right answer, that was Suzanne's answer. Okay, got it. Got it. Told me that at the beginning. <laughs> okay. What Anything about, else? What about on the trapeze table breathing? So for lengthening the hamstrings, right. So what about it? Now did, I, I see some quizzical looks, and this is good. This is the problem solving. Yes, Tana got the whole non-verbal of what? <laughs> <laughs> that whole deflated posture. So, but, but Karen's got a very good point. On the descent, mm -hmm. when there is the control. Right? You're getting into that elongation of the hamstrings. And you're adding weight bearing to it also. So that weight bearing is through the, the scapula for breathing. Right, but like in the legs for that control for stability to keep it stable. Right, that's right. good for the, um, the spine stability. Right. Right, because you're, you are, and, and what, what in our, um, in our pole star speak, what are we doing to create that through the breathing exercise? How are we creating that spine stability? In pole star speak. In exam speak. Um, and it's really, truly what's happening. Not just an indoctrination. It's really, truly what's happening. So we talk about one of the most important things, going back to, again, principles, is this, the mobility, that piece of segmental articulation Something has to turn off and something has to turn on. Your, you're talking about your spine extensors. All right, so what? Feed back, feed forward, feed back. Not quite feed forward, feed back. We're getting into something else now. We're talking about what spinal articulation that has to release. One thing that's in common about all of the spinal articulation mm -hmm. repertoire that under the spinal articulation principle we talked about at length. Elongation? That would be under the axial elongation core control principle. But that is a big part of this. You do right. have to have the elongation to get the articulation. You're absolutely right. They're related. But we talked about global 
and so low pleasures and stabilizers. So Karen's rationale is absolutely right on for breathing mm -hmm. being a movement that is going to improve the spine stability through the mechanism of turning on the local stabilizers and turning off the global, global stabilizers. Because so you're trying to excellent. make those individual spinal extensors, you don't want those large mus muscles controlling the movement. As you right, so down. the smaller locals okay. only go a couple of segments, maybe one segment. Most of them go two to three segments. Mm -hmm. That's considered local. The globals cover big areas of the spine. So in order to articulate one bone at a time, which one's going to be most effective? One that goes a long way or one that goes a short distance, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. the, the short one's going to actually move the bone by bone. Okay, good. So that was, I'm going to want to hear you in a chorus of Polestar speak. So the benefit of segmental articulation as we look at the long sit exercise in Gaining more spinal stability is it activates the local stabilizers. It activates the, the global, global stabilizers. stabilizers. Oh, beautiful! <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself, ladies. Thank you. All right, you can pause.